streaming. Where are we? Cool. And there we go. Awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is November 2nd, 2019. And uh, what we're doing today is Julian Assange Open Discussion Part 3. We already did two of these things uh, uh, this week. And um, I planned on doing a third one. And there was a request to do it at this time on Saturday at 10 a.m. PDT, my time, Pacific time, coast, uh, Canada, uh, which sort of kicks it into late evening in Europe and uh, early afternoon in uh, East Coast. Okay. Now, we've done a couple of these, and um, they were interesting. We did a fair bit. We talked a fair bit. Okay, we covered a lot. We read some articles. Uh, we watched a couple of interviews. Okay, and um, and we're gonna follow that same pattern. Okay, and we're gonna wait a few minutes until people roll in. I will. I will have the link in the description of this video to the previous two discussions we've had. We actually had four previous discussions. We did a live stream regarding Julian Assange on. Uh, when he was ex extracted out of the Ecuadorian embassy, right? And we covered some information. We talked about who WikiLeaks is and what they've done and whatnot. Um, and things have kicked into uh, the final leg, really, of uh, what's going to happen to Julian Assange. And uh, that's why we started these live streams. He already served a sentence one year for skipping bail, 50 weeks, I guess, for skipping bail and seeking asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy. And uh, since the year has been up, uh, what we're seeing is uh, the hearings into extradite Julian Assange as fast as possible to the United States have uh, have kicked in okay sticks free assange 100 percent racer kill how are you doing good morning cron how's life how are you doing intrepid welcome welcome hey chicho happy to be here do you know when we are going to uh are doing the next relationship live stream i need some serious advice my friend uh intrepid send me a reminder and i'll make sure we set it up um maybe next weekend, if that's okay. Um, I would love to talk about relationships right now. You know what, we got a couple, I know, you know what, the relationships deserve the attention they need and it needs to be a dialogue, right? So uh, if you wanna talk, and if it's really urgent, brother, uh, send me a message and I'll gladly, I'll gladly talk to you if you would like, uh, if it's urgent, 100%, uh, okay, either, um, discord private chat email or if you require we can do a one-on-one -on -one. Uh, i'm up for it if it's urgent if it's not that urgent uh, you just need to get some ideas off your head uh, and just bounce off some ideas uh, let us know when next weekend i think next weekend should be okay for me um, maybe even fr as early as Friday, but I doubt if I could do it as early as Friday this week. Either Saturday, Sunday, Monday is difficult. Saturday, Sunday, or Tuesday next week. Let me know when works best for you, and I uh, will try to set it up. Even in the middle of the night, I don't care, okay? Feels like the media really downplays Assange. Oh, racer kill, I got a treat for you. Uh, we're gonna start this off. By the way, for today's plan, we're going to start this off by reading a comment that was posted on one of the other videos that we loaded up regarding Julian Assange. More on this when we get into in a couple of minutes, okay? Media today is controlled by the powers in the dark. Most people working within the media today are tools. Yes, and more so, right? Cron, relationships is a good one. Yeah, relationships is, is crucial, I think. Real journalism is dying. 
real journalism is not on the forefront is not what the propagandas corporate propagandas and corporations and governments are pushing they are pushing the their narrative right anybody who wants to get real news stop i've mentioned this a gazillion times now stop watching abc B, bbc cnn fox uh cnbc stop watching corporate propaganda it's gonna mush your brain okay in sweden our biggest newspaper called oft often blood it or a social democratic newspaper will do thanks a lot okay awesome intrepid and it's loaded with bullshit and it's loaded with propaganda uh, it's loaded with programming uh, tools mechanisms it acts on people's subconscious it gets people to become reactionaries instead of uh, critical thinkers the corporate propaganda machine is one of the things that needs to completely be annihilated in a sense of just get them to lose all credibility anybody that quotes anything really substantial and they base all of their beliefs and theories on anything if they've read on cnn fox the atlantic we're going to touch on the daily b anything that is corporate run shills pushing the garbage they need to have their head examined you are not you as some people are beginning to refer to it they're npcs non-player characters right stop exposing yourself to that garbage the way propaganda works in the western world is more subtle if you start being too loud regarding things such as assange you'll get smeared and delegitimized it's so effective that direct censorship is rarely needed 100 percent racer kill right and that is the reason people need to stop giving any weight credit to new york times washington post any of these agencies write them off for 10 percent of real facts that they portray with words that sort of deflect from the main theme of the articles there's 90 percent garbage okay why in the world would you consume 90 for 90 garbage to have 10 percent of possibly substantial bits of information right they don't want humans to be uh, loc uh, logical beings they want us to be free based beings feeling based beings because we are uh, a feel because we are feeling based you don't act logically yeah hey, saint just germany how are you doing when you give the humans the belief that they are in control you get a very obedient group of humans you do you do i did i talked to someone uh, uh yesterday that uh, dropped a few quotes on me and they were, they were great i'm not gonna um he, here's one quote uh, i haven't checked into this to see if it's a legitimate quote or not uh, but he basically said uh, one of the quotes that stalin had was um let me see if i can let's say i'm paraphrasing right he said uh, quoting stalin uh, paraphrasing a quote that i heard this person say from stalin that i haven't checked into right so i'm disseminating maybe false information here but i like that it doesn't make a difference who said it right uh the quote is this guns are guns are dangerous um guns are dangerous. i don't ideas uh, the guns are dangerous so are ideas uh we don't allow our citizens to have guns why do we allow our citizens to have ideas along those lines okay on that note let's begin our third discussion on julian assange since the extradition hearings have started okay now if you recall uh last week if you've watched it when we did a couple of live streams um when julian assange was extracted out of out of the ecuadorian embassy that was about a year ago 50 weeks ago 51 weeks ago or something like this we sort of laid the groundwork of who julian assange is why this is happening and whatnot 
He served his times for skipping bail. Now the hearings have started regarding his extradition. Okay. So last week, during this week, a few days ago, we did two live streams. Julian Assange opened discussion part one and Julian Assange opened discussion part two, right? And we talked about some of the things that have played out. We watched a couple of videos. We read a couple of, at least a couple of articles and had a discussion. Okay. This is part three following what we've covered already okay and what i'm going to start off with this discussion is a comment that was posted on a previous one of the previous videos we put out last week okay i read some mainstream german media because there are some facts in it the alternative media is like a commentary and sup supplement to mainstream media my parents still watch mainstream news at prime time but also political cabaret yeah held message racer kill oh, we're gonna allow that i don't know what that says but racer kill your comments are allowed for example there's no so many leaks of what cia has done the last decade but there's so little discussion about it in the media it's not directly censored you can find information online but it's never put on spotlight in any big media and most importantly no one is ever published yeah uh a punished yeah now take a look at this here's a comment that was posted on uh, let me just make sure this is looking okay for you guys okay I'm gonna read this comment some of it is cut off but it is what it is here let me reduce the size let me put my tea down so I don't spill any tea oh it goes all the way across okay anyway this is the comment we're gonna read okay and it was posted on the video that we had up which was called uh, bah, bah, bah. it was one of the previous videos we did on Julian Assange and it's called uh, it's the segment about that we had to cut off the stream right it's the segment called cash versus digital uh, conspiracy theory facts Noam Chomsky conspiracy theories right that's the video that this comment was posted on I'm gonna put this on in chat as well okay and I'll try to remember to post it in the description of this video, but most likely it will be there. Someone calling Assange an a-hole. Listen to this, Sticksman, right? So I'm going to read this. And the user's name is Pash Atlam. Okay, and I replied to this person right off, right away. Like he posted this yesterday and replied yesterday as well. And this morning I looked up what he was referencing. And we're going to go into what he was referencing, right? So this is either after we read the article, we'll look at all the information, but just off the get, get go, this is either uh, a very confused user, either working at a troll farm or a shill. Okay. Fourth choice might, might be he he's part of the status quo that is working towards disseminating garbage, right? So, quote, you continue to be locked in your own peculiar dogma where Julian Assange, a deranged asshole, hated by everyone who ever worked with him, is some sort of persecuted hero of the truth. It doesn't bother you for a moment that this Assange actively helped get Trump elected, nor the many charges against him surely just drum, drum, uh, drummed up falsehoods by all his powerful enemies and as such you distr distrust legitimate media sources at least the best news outlets adhere to some degree of journalistic integrity unlike the lunatic fringe of conspiracy theorists nuts you follow perhaps diverse uh, diversify your reading material with an article from an un unimpeachable source like the Atlantic where an act, actual journalist Michael Wees offers a dose of truth about Assange just do a web search for quote Julian Assange got what he deserved end quote and then quote again and he's quoting something from the article now quote so the article is called Julian Assange got what he deserved by Michael Wees I don't recommend you reading this I'm just going to read this little quote 
they extracted out of the article right quote in the end the man who reportedly smeared feces on the walls of his lodgings mistreated his kitten and and variously blamed the ills of the world on feminist and bespectacled Jew, Jewish writers was pulled from the Ecuadorian embassy looking very in every inch like a powdered sugar Saddam Hussein plucked straight from a spider's hole and quoting the article okay and that was the full comment that this person posted this was my reply before checking out his source because the the part that he quoted in his comment we already know that Assange smearing feces on the walls is a lie, just garbage, just random. <laughs> right? It's just like it's, it's like me coming up and saying, uh, the Pope takes jelly donuts and does things to them and throws them all over the Vatican. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, just garbage, right? The part about mistreated his kitten is just garbage, like, just pure lie like this already come out all of this is just garbage like you you dig down even on a superficial level you realize it's just garbage right just like it's ridiculous right but these people are propagating this in the mainstream news even the atlantic right so my comment to this guy was this hi pash sounds like you've you've been reading way too many conspiracy theories my advice step away from the mainstream propagandist they are not good for your mind or your soul hang around here for a while let me know what you think of the next few videos coming up you may find them interesting to say the least and i put a little winky face in there okay that was my comment let me just follow up on the chat uh <laughs> <laughs> Olive, how you doing? How you doing? Someone call you. Yeah. Uh, sometimes documentaries go more deep into these topics. Uh, at least in Germany, news are all about the current events, like uh, background facts. I'd say, to a certain degree, some facts. The facts that they're willing to share, the misinformation they want to share. And I agree with you. I like documentaries. Uh, but, but you also have to look into who's creating those documentaries. Olive, I'm glad you made it, by the way. Lunatic fringe and conspiracy theories in last year, six months. You're right. But in the end, such things mostly gives the perception of freedom because they are very rarely real. What exactly is Michael Weiss offering? Uh, Sticksman, we're going to look into Michael Weiss, who this person is, right? Is he against Julian Assange's work with WikiLeaks? Or is he just out after destroying his integrity now this person commenting called this michael wise guy a journalist a journalist would never write this crap a real journalist this person is a propagandist he's writing that assange abused this kitten what are you talking about like really what are you talking about it's just chatter noise right and people read this crap right this type of person smearing is just absurd. Julian Assange could be an asshole. It wouldn't matter. Exactly. 100%, right? I think Zeek pointed out freedom of speech is a sign of a system which doesn't have to fear other opinions anymore because it's so strong established that no speech can be dangerous. China, however, has to fear freedom of speech since it could, in fact, shatter the system. So China's system is not as set in stone as Western mainstream. The Pope embarrasses his priesthood with jelly donuts. <laughs> the Atlantic article looks to be only published online where anyone can publish an op-ed. The actual print edition of the Atlantic has far higher standards. I wouldn't touch the Atlantic, tell you the truth, dragons, right? I've read some stuff on the Atlantic that I agreed with, some stuff, and then you read some stuff, you go, wow, this is like pure garbage, right? So personally i'm not into reading mag rags like this right where are his proofs for the kid there are no proofs there is no proof like it's just garbage right assange is um, uh, embarrassing for the media shows how little really investigative journalism they do exactly tab right now fun fact about sweden kids in school are not allowed to dress out as gingerbread men 
but they can dress out to whatever else they want gingerbread man is considered racism are you serious <laughs> that's crazy things but <laughs> absurd right now i found the article i went to the atlantic this is the article that the person is talking about right let me make sure we're still streaming okay it's all looking good okay all looking good let me put the chat up here now i haven't read this article i'm not going to like as far as i'm concerned it's just rag garbage right uh like ridiculous right uh, and that it looks like he took the first paragraph of this article from what he posted and this thing came out april 15 2019 right now who is this michael weiss guy this guy right here right i did a little search found his twitter feed okay you find his twitter feed so i try to go to his website his website is 401 error so there is no website right so i can't really read what he says about himself right okay good enough uh reporting smear <laughs> exactly another founder of wikileaks is german daniel uh doshan i think i, I know him he is very anti NSA and anti surveillance, but pointed out Assange is very egomaniac on hard to work with. Sure, that's fine. He can be. Sometimes some people consider me extremely hard to work with, right? Like it's just an absurd attempt to make him look insane. Exactly. So I go to this guy's thing. I didn't. I don't bother looking at any of his tweets. It doesn't make a difference to me. It really. It, just from that one paragraph you can tell that this guy is just uh just it's like i don't even know if i'm allowed to say what this guy is right a big amount of successful people are very hard to work with they tend to do what they want themselves okay so we can't go to his website his website's down right he's got a link here that takes you to amazon i believe where he wrote a book okay and this guy's got 125,000 followers I doubt it right if these followers are real here's the reason let's dig a little deeper into this dude right so the about page I could find is Wikipedia now I mentioned that Wikipedia is not a great source of information but we'll take a we'll take a peek because we can't go to his website his website's down on his Twitter feed he's selling his book right oh yeah let me read you what he says on his twitter account right co-author of new york times bestseller isis inside the army of terror and it's got a link to amazon and it continues daily beast editor at large grew offici uh, gru aficionado encrypt e and he's got a, his proto mail email address in here right so we can't go to his website we go to wikipedia let's start off there i don't want to spend too much time on this dude here's the dude here's his face can you guys see that that's him let's make sure this thing's popping up let's see is it pop oh my god did i have the screen turned off oh no no i don't there he is yeah yeah yeah. you guys see him i thought we're seeing black i'm like oh no i went through all that with blackness now let's read his wikipedia thingamajig all right reading his wikipedia page. he's an editor of the daily beast and a contributor to cnn exactly dragons dig deeper check this out right so i'll read this michael Wees is an american journalist and author Wees is a senior editor for the daily beast a consulting executive editor of coda story a columnist for foreign policy right and foreign policy will go there i i've read foreign policy articles that's one of the mo most hardcore neoconservative rag mags you can find right horrendous wall street journal people read this right fund managers read this money people read this it's it's garbage right an author and a frequent national security analyst and contributor for cnn wow okay 
Education. Do we want to know his education? Sure. Let's read his education. Education. Wies was born to a Jewish family and educated at Townsend Harris High School, a public magnet high school in Flushing, Queens in New York City, from which he graduated in 1998, followed by, uh, by Dartmouth College in 2002 with a BA in history. History. Dude. Okay. Life and career. The first sentence said everything you need to know, right? Wies has served as co-chair of the Russian Studies Center at the neoconservative British policy think tank, Henry Jackson Society. So this guy works at a neoconservative think tank. And this Joe below here is quoting an article about the most important journalist that we have had in human history quoting that how bad Julian Assange is, the most important journalist we have had in human history that has held power accountable and nothing that they have printed, they have had to ex recall everything as fact, right? Pure history. This Joe Blow is supposed to be studying BA in history. He should be drooling over Wikipedia, uh, WikiLeaks, right? Because it's pure history, right? And he works for a neoconservative think tank. So you already know who this guy is, right? Check out this crap. Check out this crap. I'll, I'll skip the rest. Like, it's just insane, right? We'll go down to this part. In March 2015, in an article co-written with uh, Michael Pregent, we accused Iran-backed Iran -backed Iraqi Shia militias of committing extensive atrocities against Sunni civilians in the course of their war against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, including, quote, from their article or whatever they wrote, quote, burning people, people alive in their houses, playing soccer with severed human heads, and ethnically cleansing and raising whole villages to the ground, end quote. We as in pre Pregents suggested that, quote, Iran's Shia's militias aren't a whole lot better than the Islamic State, end quote. Continuing, in 2016, Wies called Russia a terrorist state and said that, quote, Russian corruption has been described as one of the country's chief exports. Wies joined CNN in April 2017. I'm going to close all these other tabs now. Here's foreign policy. You can go down to here. That's enough of that nonsense, right? That's enough of that nonsense. Okay. Just wanted to read you that. I closed the comment as well, right? Because unfortunately, there are simpletons, there are shills, there are people living in their echo chambers that read this crap from supposed credited sources People who they call journalists that they really don't know are not journalists. They're neoconservative propagandists or corporate propagandists or socialist propagand propagandists, right? That they have, have their own agenda and they use these people that made this comment on the previous video as tools, right? To wage war, to destroy our societies, right? as i was going to find you this quote but i'll find it for you as the following person states okay okay i'm going to read you this article i've quoted this article uh this quote in a few of my um few of my articles in the past and stuff on my blog i was gonna actually gonna find them but i forgot right so this is a quote from Mal malcolm x and this quote is much larger okay but quote if you're not careful the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing okay and that's an extract from let me see if i can find the full article full quote Oh, unfortunately, I didn't look at it. Um, I didn't find it. Uh, I have the full quote on my blog site, but we'll leave it alone. I don't want to go through 
checking it out, finding it, right? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now we're going to find, we're going to talk about some real information, right? Now we've already read a couple, some articles, looked at some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, videos, a couple of videos and stuff like this. But I want to start off with this one. We're going to follow that garbage. Oh, what? Why is this down? Oh, why is this down? Why is this down? I didn't check this to see if it was down. Julian Assange court. Oh, come on. Torturing Julian Assange. Why is this down? Hmm. I wasn't expecting this article to be down. Let's put this in. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, gang. That might have been loud. My bad. Let me find this. I'll catch up with the comments as soon as we find this. I just want to lay it out for you guys. Where did it go? Oh, come on. Mm, let's go to Google, see if we can find it there. There we go. Pew. Okay. This is what we want. So sometimes the articles change their their links change up. Let's see if the C3, I just want to make sure it's the ah, it should have been there. For some reason it wasn't showing up. Let me try it again one more time. Maybe it was a little glitch or it doesn't like directly being linked there. Oh, now it's popping up. Pooper scooper, right? So let me catch up with the chat. This is what we're going to read. And there's videos in here. And the videos are from the UN repertoire that when in, investigated to see if Julian Assange was someone being held in a Western government prison that was being tortured. And he went in there as an unbiased UN representative came out in full support of Julian Assange, right? Let me catch up with the chat and then we'll dig into this article. Okay. Uh, I think it's just an absurd attempt to make him look insane. Uh, a big amount of successful people are very bad, bad, bad journalists trying to sell his own book journalist exactly reading his wikipedia page he's an editor for the daily beast and contributed to cnn frequent national security analyst that contributed to cnn i guess that if he don't contribute what they want him to contribute they uh, still let him contribute <laughs> yeah. thing is being hard to work with and other uh, other personality flaws are being used as sly deflections or even uh, justification for his terrible treatment for the lands of the benevolent democracies sounds like an ang angry conduit yeah strikes me as a, a status propagandist if one chooses to look at it that way interesting that for a video with 500 view views comments like that show up for, for video with 500 views comments like that show up if you read another Assange uh, if you read about Assange on say reddit you'll find so many comments about his personal flaws bad things he's apparently done implications that he's benefiting Russia etc everything to dilute the real discussion racer kill exactly reddit was hijacked a while ago like I've I've been on Reddit for 12 years or so. Like I was one of the first people there. I used to go there a fair bit. I go there selectively now. I used to read comments. I used to contribute to comments. I don't really anymore um, because it's, it's, it's governed by troll farms. The Reddit already came out like last two, three years that people that were running at it, they were actually going into people's comments and editing people's comments, users' comments. So whatever you find on Reddit, take it with a huge grain of salt. Uh, the news feed that you're subscribed to, if you're subscribed to politics on Reddit, stop it. 
don't read that crap it's filtered news world politics history science all of that all of the main subs they're garbage stop getting your main sources of news from reddit that was a long time ago if you missed the boat on reddit when reddit was grand i'm sorry there's going to be other forums coming up that are going to be phenomenal for long periods of time or short periods of time you have to be an active consumer of information if you're chasing what was your brainwash you're programmed right stop 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 trusting reddit and those sites and just to let you know like i'm not talking out of my ass right reddit back in the day a lot of because i was blogging a lot on politics economics and all kinds of things mathematics and stuff like this my articles back in the late 2000s you would have found them the top post on world politics the top post on politics the pop top post on economics the top post on conspiracy um, the top post on mathematics some of them right like some of my articles were on the front pages of reddit for about a you would find them on a regular basis or semi-regular basis um, for about three four five years and then the corporations took over right okay forget reddit is still okay certain parts but be careful people say and write stuff with a reason for it always try to figure out what that or those reasons are hey chicho hello bit monkey how are you doing everyone know how malcolm x ended up yeah they hired a couple of thugs to take him out right i know this guy from muhammad <laughs> well that the documentary there's a couple of documentaries on muhammad ali phenomenal documentaries lions how are you doing Hannah, how's it going i'm gonna lurk and chill chill brother chill when you are close to the truth and exposing something that's when they attack you the most if they can't beat you with facts they attack your integrity exactly copy paste or perhaps possibly uh, what search engine are you using i'm using DuckDuckGo. My main search engine right now is DuckDuckGo. Okay, this guy, DuckDuckGo. Is it the best? I don't know. Better than Google. Okay. Better than Google. For many things. What do you think will happen to Assange if he gets extradited to the US? Uh, do you have any belief in a fair? No, no, Olive. Absolutely not no one believes in a fair trial like who, who believes in a fair trial in the united states especially for people like julian assange no in a dem democracy is about the best arguments if you educate it and have a good uh, portion of healthy skepticism you can benefit from reading some mainstream articles uh, germany i don't disagree with you but you better be well armed you better realize that it's not everything you read is not fact and there's most likely certain amount of disinformation in there i believe i don't want to discard big newspapers completely because you can learn how specific groups of people think and argue i agree with you right it's always good to have a have the perspective from multiple angles right but know where that's that perspective is coming from that person writing that comment on our previous article really the guy is is either a simpleton like really just a simple tool a non-player character npc and npc right he's a shrill or he's selling something war wall street whatever it might be or he's working for new york times or atlantic or he's this weiss's best friend or something like this right i, I doubt it but uh, i can definitely get most likely this person is a reactionary simpleton right a lot of uh, young people on reddit where else is better to spread propaganda no. and all these sites are much better for information than reddit yeah yeah reddit isn't even a shell of its former self It's strictly an advertising platform yeah my expectation is he is going to a prison for life he is if he is extradited uh, my guess is he's going to be suicided he's gonna he's gonna die right oh, okay thank you matt stylin you're welcome 
I'm not sure what the thank you was for, but you're welcome. The upvote system created echo chambers by itself is quite different from the old school type of forums where the sending opinions didn't get hidden. Yeah. And here, just to just to let you know, if you know mathematics, you'll know when the switch, the, the final nail in the coffin for Reddit occurred. Now, Reddit used to have the number of upvotes and the number of downvotes. You could see it for everything, right? A few years ago, they eliminated that and made it a percentage right if you know mathematics you know percentage means nothing if you don't know the absolute numbers number of subscribers to the forums and stuff is lie is bs right you know it's bs because i've posted articles some of my stuff making it to the front page of some of the forums on reddit in the past right and according to the number of it being number of subscribers on those uh, forums and the number of views or hits the video was getting or article was getting is is a pale reflection of what it used to be right so the the mathematics tells you everything right i agree find it best to treat news outlets new york times washington as a press release from power structures that's a good way of doing it that's a good way of saying a dragons and then you got to dig down into the into the news story but don't follow all their news stories like if people are New York Times and watch if they're writing articles on Julian Assange abusing his kitten are you kidding me just move on from that don't waste your time reading gossip all right it's, it's useless Assange is lucky if he ends up in prison yeah sticks I agree with you is it surreal to see this happening to a journalist in the free world uh, I'm glad you put that free world in quotation marks. Is this surreal? No, they've done this to many other journalists in the past. Julian Assange just happens to be the most important journalist we have had in our current iteration of civilization, which would be for the last few centuries. Literally, that's how important what he has done is. Okay just sent you the situation on discord chicho hope you can take a look at it when you get a chance thanks again my my pleasure intrepid and i will okay um i'll try to get to it later on tonight i have some students i have to attend to after the stream eduardo how are you doing i think reddit now shows upvotes minus downvotes at least i see whole numbers like that yeah and the numbers were skewed initially they took them out they had percentages and then they introduced the whole numbers but you can't rely on that that's fake police seeming to arrest each other he's coming to arrest each other i hope not who could save assange we could save assange eduardo humanity can save assange russia or china i don't think china will try to save assange and i don't think russia will either in germany the biggest conservative and intellectual newspaper is frankfurt Alama, uh, I believe then uh, there is a uh, and die. I think they are 100% good for non controversial topic. Controversial topic, blah, 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 blah. interesting. Thanks. Okay, let's read this article. I caught up with the chat. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got some snacks. Let me show you my snack. Okay, this is let me see. This is dates and cheese. Let's see if I can show it to you guys. Check that out dates and cheese go phenomenal together okay and i got a little drink here this is blackberry uh jam and i put soda in it so it becomes like blackberry drink china will definitely not protect assange was big in panama papers oh did they release a lot of stuff on panama papers then right on then that's a not a bad source if they would want to okay okay i'm going to read this article and we're going to watch the videos embedded in the article and this is coming from a real journalist and this is his name let me get you get you the link okay this is this is the article we're about to read okay what kind of cheese it's uh it's not asiago it's um oh sorry it's asiago it's like it's dry okay it's it's strong flavor and it goes phenomenal with dates dates and cheese are amazing together 
like they're phenomenal together dry strong cheese crumbly it's got sort of the same texture as parmesan but a little bit more bit moisture more moisture hey jacobi how are you doing also date's gonna give you that blood sugar spike definitely i'm a huge date eater date is one of the most staple diet of foods i have in my diet which always china always stay apolitical and international matters not affecting them yeah fruit and cheese go well well together any sweet and salty cheese combo hmm yeah i'm sorry for the ignorant question but how come we're discussing massage not too well versed in this whole controversy uh i know the basics uh, the reason we're discussing at jacoby is because he's the most important journalist we have had in our current iteration of civilization he's one of the most he's the most important journalist for the last few centuries um, i don't know the journalist previous to this right i maybe maybe i'll say for the last since i've been you know following hardcore politics for the last 40 years right i started following politics politics in my teens right early teens so the most important journalist that we know of and the powers that be in the United States and the UK and different Western countries, they're going after him, right? We have to ask ourselves, why are these CIA, FBI, White House, UK, uh, Canada, why are these governments going after this person that, it, that is holding power accountable? And he's come up with a platform because of technology with WikiLeaks has came at a time where social network media has kicked into high gear and gone online and provided a platform for whistleblowers to anonymously leak information from either governments or corporations that are conspiring to harm humanity he is ridiculously important any news source that you're following that doesn't cover julian assange on a regular basis and i don't mean on a monthly basis i mean at least do one main news story in-depth news story per week that shows at least three or four times during the week preferably once a day find a different news source julian assange what's happening to him is one of the most important things taking place currently if you want to follow politics economics or history can we look at this article you shared uh, last time? Oh, the link doesn't come up. Which article was that, Olive? If you take the title, I can. I should be able to find it. But I definitely want to go through this because we looked at the garbage, what the garbage news was saying. Now we're going to look at what real news is saying. Okay. Have you guys uh, discussed Edward Stern during these streams? A uh, very little dragons. What would be a possible motivation for treating Assange badly while in captivity? I get him to die right he's off your hands right oh he died it's over right he won't make the news one of the most important figures of recent decades the man is a hero should receive a pres presidential pardon which is never going to happen i know yeah okay torturing julian assange stephen parrot okay now i'm gonna put the hopefully this thing's not gonna allow me to read the chat okay i'm moving this guy over a little bit let's see how our thing looks good enough that way the whole article is showing up okay britain obstructs spain investigation into cia spying on assange oh that one yeah for sure i got a feeling this might cover ah this might not cover it so basically the article that olive is talking about is this one let me find it julian <laughs> assange uh, well where 
was that article? Oh yeah, CIA, this one. Spain CIA surveillance. Okay. So if we open this one up, let's just open this one up. We'll read the first paragraph and I'll give you guys a link. Here's the link for it. Thanks, Olo, for bringing this up. It's pretty important because any court case that involved this would come out, the court case would have been dismissed, right? This one. Britain obstructs Spanish investigation into CIA spying on Julian Assange. Now, some people, here, here's the thing with uh, people who are triggered, who are reactionary. Some people will look at this and say, oh, this is from the World Socialist website, and they'll dismiss this whole thing. They won't bother looking past this, right? This is fact. This has come out. Like, it's just this source I picked out for sharing the information, right? If you do a search CIA spying on Julian Assange, Spanish CIA spying on Julian, you'll find all the information, right? So here's the article. And this came out October 26, 2019. In a blatant quote, in a blatant attempt to obstruct justice, British judicial authorities are stemming, stemming, stymying, stymying, wow. That's a cool word, stymie. Okay, I'm gonna read that again, quote. In a blatant attempt to obscure justice, obstruct justice, British judicial authorities are stymieing an investigation into the US Central Intelligence Agency's CIA, illegal spying on WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange. El Peso uh, reported on Wednesday that a request by Spanish judge Jose de la Mata to interview Assange via video link had been rejected by the United Kingdom Cent Central Authority last month. De La Mat Mata is investigated and complained by Assange's lawyers alleging that UC Global, the private company hired to provide security to Ecuador's London embassy, illegally surveilled him on behalf of US authorities while he was protected with political asylum inside the building. So the United States was watching Julian Assange 24 hours a day, keeping track of who was coming, going, all of his paperwork. They took all of his papers, everything, right? The CIA was doing this throughout the whole time. I believe it's throughout the whole time since Julian Assange was in the Ecuadorian embassy, or at least since um, the new president came in, right? For the last couple of years. Okay, so they, if you're taking someone to court, you can't do that. That's like court case dropped out, right? And this thing continues. Okay, so did I provide the link to you guys if you want to read that article? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I did. Honestly, the Joe Rogan podcast is a good news platform. A uh, Joe Rogan, I don't mind. Uh, I, I don't agree with everything that I see there or hear there but I listen to it more than mainstream media. No bullshit, no censors, just honest, open discussion. Yeah, and that's one thing I like about it, right? Rogan literally told a guest to shut the fuck up when they brought up auto industry conspiracies. Yeah, but he's a human being, so I'm okay with that. He's not, he's, he's allowed to say that. If I talk with some people, I might say, oh man, just be quiet regarding that. That's fine, right? He let his guests speak and elaborate on ideas unlike modern news channels who pick and choose out of context clips and someone's to force their own agendas agreed on that i'm aware of which episode and what's the context he discusses literally everything with one uh, however uh, wherever the conversation goes he goes with it yeah thanks for the uh, subscribe lions very much appreciate wait four months already did I not have a three month like two days ago? I don't know, Lions. Uh, oh, it's rolled over into new month. That's right. It's a new month. So thanks for four months in a row. Okay. As far as Joe Rogan's concerned, here's the kicker, right? He's wrong on some stuff. Like, for example, according, like, he's come out and said some crap regarding boxers, just talking out of his ass because he has a secondary agenda because he's a broadcaster for ultimate fighting stuff right for wwc and ultimate fighting and all that jazz right 
So he came out during one of his podcasts and said, oh, boxers aren't really, they couldn't hold their own here, they couldn't hold their own there, which is complete garbage. Boxers are some of the most well-trained athletes and fighters in the world. So a lot of people in the boxing community considered Joe Rogan to be a schmuck because he made that comment. I think later on he came and apologized for it, right? So Joe Rogan is just a human being, okay? Triple, oh yeah, I'm done. Bringing it up for conversation's sake. Okay, awesome. Let's go back to this article, Olive. So that's the article. Maybe we'll get a chance to read it. But let's go through this one because this one is important. Because this this guy right here, okay, one of the most credible. I'm gonna increase this guy so you guys see it better. Uh, this guy right here is this guy right here is the Yuan repertoire that looked in, into Julian Assange being tortured. Okay. And this reporter right here, this guy right here. Uh, oh, we can't see his face very well. This guy right here is a phenomenal reporter. Follow his work. And his name is Stephen Parrott. Okay. Let me. Wait, what's going on? Open link and new tab. Boink. This guy. Hey, what's going on? Uh, here's his Twitter feed. I should be following him. Oh man, I'm not following him. I just read his articles. Here's his Twitter feed. Okay. And this guy only has 3,172 followers. The other person, Weiss guy, the Michael Weiss guy that wrote that rag in the Atlantic, the garbage in the Atlantic, had 125,000 followers. A huge portion of that is just garbage, is fake, right? But still, disproportional. This is a real journalist. The other guy is just gossip crap, just garbage, right? So that should give you an idea of the state of our societies. It was a way of supporting creators and you get access to potential. Da, 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 da. Da, da, bring it off for conversation. I'll check it out on uh, Dragons. Thanks for sending on the whole, though. I believe the podcast to be a Chicho. Zach, how are you doing? Am I subscribed to you, Chicho? I don't know how Twitch works. Um, I know you're not subscribed. If you if you're subscribed, uh, you're following, I believe, Olive. But if you're subscribed, you get a little some kind of symbol here, like a like four month subscriber or um, oh, that's me, that's broadcaster, and this one like a Twitch Prime subscriber. Um, so that's one way of like someone said you have to pay to become a subscriber yeah no to subscribe you got to hit subscribe at the top of the stream window cost five dollars us per month okay it's a way of supporting creators and you get access to special channel emotes and if the broadcaster goes into sub only mode you are still able to talk and i will i can honestly tell you guys i'll never go into sub only mode right i'm here to share information uh I might offer certain things for people if they're subbing because having the funds come in makes my job a lot easier, right? Being able to support this work, but I will always share the information. Signal to noise ratio. Oh, well, I don't know if I can afford that. Living on a stand. Uh, Olive, if you can't afford it, take care of your own business. When you can, I'm going to be here for a long haul, brother. Okay. If you find what I'm doing, if you're sticking around for a long haul, if you find what I'm doing over the next few years and what we've done previously useful and informative, when you do have the funds, support this work, either through Patreon, direct donation, or whatever it is, right? I'm okay with that, brother, okay? If you can't afford it, take care of your business, man. Don't go into debt, okay? Who could really save Assange if the ones talking reason don't seem to have enough voice? Uh, the people. X, how are you doing? Let's read this article. Julian, torturing Julian Assange by Stephen Parrott. Okay. Julian Assange, so quote, Julian Assange has been found to have been cruelly tortured psychologically by the UK, US, Sweden, by the UK, US, Sweden, and Ecuador. This psychological torture has been, has been, uh, 
critically assisted by mainstream media. Reacting to the reports of the possibility of senior human rights violation, serious human rights viola violations against Julian Assange, the UN Special Repertoire on Torture, Nils Melzer, contacted the formal uh, conducted a formal investigation with the cooperation of the UK government. On the 9th of May 2019, Julian was assessed to have the effect of torture by Neil Melsner, a legal expert, along with two medical specialists in the field of torture. While the assessment was in progress, N Nils, Neil, Nils Melzer spoke to Ruptli. Okay, and R Ruptli is a Russian news agency. So imagine this. This didn't come out in the Western corporate propagandas. It came out from the Russian source, right? So let's watch this video. Oh, hold on a second before we watch it. I got to turn on. I got to make sure that this is uh, the sound thing is on here. I almost forgot audio desk. Let me make sure that this is going to work. Concerns I have expressed with regard to a possible extradition of Oops. Julian Assange to the United States. Yeah, so that's working. Where I'm, I fear I'm going to step away and get my headphones and come back, okay? Because I need to hear this as well. Sorry about that, gang. Let me put on this thing. Let's put the chat back up. You can subscribe for free with Twitch Prime. Yeah, if you have Twitch Prime, you can subscribe for free. I'm going to try to make sure that this isn't very noisy. Prime Russian media sources are also unreliable, but they filter a different set of stories in order to push a different agenda. Thus, it can sometimes make note of things worth uh, paying attention to. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I've been following your discussion on this topic, YouTube and YouTube, and finally got uh, to catch a stream. I've been posting all links and videos you have showed to social media outlets to try and spread. Through. Awesome, Zach. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, and I think it was important what we did this morning, like earlier, looking at the, the garbage that was being propagated through the corporate media, right? So let's take a look at this video. Let me bring up the chat again. Oops. Concerns I have expressed with regard to a possible extradition of Julian Assange to the United States where I fear that he might be uh, exposed to serious violations of his human rights. Uh, we are here upon the invitation of the Ministry of Ju Justice, and I would like to thank the Ministry of Justice for having facilitated this visit and also for having arranged meetings with the uh, Belmarsh prison authorities this afternoon and also some other authorities tomorrow. I will also be meeting with other uh, uh, interlocutors all day tomorrow to try to come to an assessment as to the risks of torture and ill treatment that uh, Mr. Assange might be exposed to. Uh, I uh, am not uh, at this point uh, making any uh, statements about the observations I have made. I will first communicate them to the uh, uh, British authorities and then also, because this is a very important case, uh, inform the public about my findings. We have been able to uh, uh, talk to Mr. Assange in private this morning and to conduct an initial medical assessment and we will continue to see him for another two hours this afternoon and then meet with some other authorities. Okay, so this came out uh, right at the beginning, right? And as far as the date of this article, it's October 28th, 
right 2019 so it came out just a few days ago like four days ago right so that was one of the first videos this person put out um olive yeah i think i've been watching chicho for about the same period of time nice <laughs> i started out with math and then i found all the other great content i am pretty new to twitch got it to watch uh chicho live that's why i don't know much about it awesome uh, olive thanks for being here by the way and i'm new to twitch i was like i've been here about a year and a half now i believe year and a half yeah about a year and a half right so it was a pretty steep learning curve for me learning how to live stream and stuff let's continue on with the with the article on the 31st first of may 2019 nils melzer announced the findings of the investigation revealing that julian assange had all the symptoms of a person who'd been psychologically tortured so in the previous video he hadn't made that decision yet here's him making a decision right I uh, visited uh, Julian Assange in Belmarsh Prison together with two medical experts specialized in uh, identifying and, and documenting symptoms of physical and psychological torture and ill-treatment. And I, I have three main concerns. First, I'm extremely worried at his current state of health, which was alarming already when I visited him, but which uh, by now seems to have deteriorated to the point where he is no longer able to stand trial and to participate in his court hearings. I'm not surprised to hear that because the psychiatrist that accompanied my mission found that his state of health was critical and that if pressure was not relieved soon, that he was likely to deteriorate rapidly to a point where damage would be uh, irreparable. Secondly, I'm appalled at the consistent and uh, sustained um, and concerted abuse that this man has been uh, exposed to by democratic states uh, over a prolonged period of time. And thirdly, I am gravely uh, concerned at uh, the possibility of extradition to the United States, where I fear he would be exposed to a politicized uh, show trial in grave violation of his human rights. I have submitted uh, formal letters to the uh, governments of the UK, the US, Sweden and Ecuador, the four countries uh, that have been responsible mainly for uh, uh, creating the situation that we are facing today, and I have uh, appealed to them um, to refrain from any further abuse. Uh, they should recognize that the way they have handled this affair is in violation of the Convention Against Torture. Um, and that uh, uh, they are obliged to uh, prevent any further violations, to investigate the circumstances that led to this abuse, and to provide Mr. Assange with rehabilitation and compensation. As to the findings, the medical findings um, that we uh, uh, produced during this visit, um, is that Mr. Assange shows all the symptoms that are typical for a person that has been exposed to psychological torture over a prolonged period of time. We're speaking of severe stress and chronic anxiety and severe psychological trauma. Um, again, the psychiatrist uh, warned that uh, this pressure must be relieved urgently, otherwise we will have very serious consequences and that's precisely what happened within two weeks now we can see that he is no longer able to stand trial okay. so he's basically coming out and saying and this is in may right so may 2019 june july august september october we're five months later and this was he was saying the u.n repertoire on torture was saying that julian assange is showing severe signs of trauma right that he's basically like someone that's been tortured five months ago when he was still being held in prison for skipping bail right seeking asylum at the ecuadorian embassy 
So this is during the time where he was in the UK jail in Belmash or wherever it is, uh, being held under certain conditions. Five months later, we saw him in court last week and we read an article in the last streams. I can't remember if it was the last one or pre one previous to that. There's three of them actually because we had to split one of them up, the second one up. And we saw the condition that he was in, in video. The same news agency got a video of him. No Western news agency got a video of him. No Western news agency got a video of him being extra uh, pulled out of Ecuadorian embassy or at the court hearing, right? That tells you what the Western mainstream media is used for. Garbage, right? They're not covering this. It's the Russian news agency that's getting this footage, right? Five months later, he's in a way worse condition than we just, what we just heard. Um, I'm just going to read a couple more comments um, before we continue with the article. Uh, from Jacoby, uh, Twitch is pretty neat. I watch it often. Uh, I watch it pretty often. Glad you got it for Chicho, though. He's a main man. <laughs> Thanks for the love, brother, Jacoby. <laughs> We've been here for a year and a half already and probably will be for years to come. Anyways, let's talk about Assange. Yeah, let's talk about Assange. Eduardo, I'm recently addicted to a criminal psychological channel that dissects interrogations the power of psychology is crazy and it's crazy that it's used for the for the evil um yeah all of the next video on the article show showing all the smearing of assange and straight up threats directed towards him is is appalling oh we're gonna check it out let's check it out okay let's see what the article says okay back to the article it has been clear to quote it has been clear to anyone keenly following the Julian Assange case. He's been subjected to many instances of unjustified abuse by prominent politicians, legal authorities, and mainstream media. Over the years, we've come to think of Julian as being exceptionally strong mentally, but we also knew the circumstances he had to endure have been uh, horrendous. Now that his mental well-being has been professionally assessed, revealing to the world his suffering all the symptoms of psychological torture, we can hard, hardly be surprised. The psycholog psychological torture was publicly evident in 2010 as the video below shows. shows. Okay, so let's take a look at this video. It's a seven and a half minute video. Attacks on WikiLeaks and Assange by U.S. the United States do something to stop Mr. Assange? We're looking at that right now. The Justice Department is taking a look at I that. I would argue that it's closer to being a high-tech terrorist than the, than the Pentagon Papers. I frankly, uh, the, 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 the head of WikiLeaks is not a particularly credible source in my mind. He's, he is a, you know, to me, in my mind, he's a, he's a criminal, and he ought to be uh, hunted down and grabbed and, and put on trial for what he has done here. Uh, information warfare is warfare. And Julian Assange is engaged in warfare. Information terrorism, which leads to people getting killed, is terrorism. And Julian Assange is engaged in terrorism. He should be treated as an enemy combatant. WikiLeaks should be closed down permanently and decisively. I think the man is a high-tech terrorist. And I think he needs to be prosecuted to the full, fullest extent of the law. And if that becomes a problem, we need to change the law. The way to deal I, with this is pretty simple. We've got special ops forces. I mean, a, a dead man can't leak stuff. This guy's a traitor, a treasonist, and, and, and he has broken every law of the United States. The guy ought to be, and I'm not for the death penalty, so if I'm not for the death penalty, I only want to do it, illegally shoot the son of a Obama, b if you're listening today, you should take this guy out, have the CIA take him out. Oh, he broke the law. You don't have to act panic. You can act tough and say, if we catch you, we're going to hang you. Yeah. Our intelligence communities will find him. Right. Uh, that's what I'd like to see, a little yeah. drone hit Assange. And we have uh, criminal proceedings underway. That's where I think the verdict is guilty, uh, on WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks uh, apparently today released um, what's described as a treasure, treasure trove of infrastructure targets uh, around the world, which of course could be damaging not only to those countries, but uh, uh, to U.S. interests. Why hasn't the government just gone ahead and shut down the site? or shut down the dissemination of his um, information. Why can't you do that? Well, 
Let me condemn in the strongest terms um, the leaks of information that have come as a result of uh, the actions that you just referenced. Um, the national security of the United States has been put at risk. The lives of uh, people who work for uh, the American people has been put at risk. Uh, the American people themselves have been put at risk by these actions that are, I believe, arrogant, misguided, uh, and ultimately um, not helpful in, in any way. Um, we are doing everything that we can. We have a very serious, active, ongoing investigation um, that is criminal in nature. I authorized just last week um, a number of things to be done so that we can hopefully get to the bottom of this and hold people uh, accountable. Now, I'm just going to interrupt this guy. This is Eric Holder. Okay. For those of you that don't know Eric Holder, look into Fast and Furious. I believe it was Fast and Furious. The gun smuggling that he... Eric Holder, Fast and Furious. I, I mean, Fast and Furious, I think, is Vin Diesel's movie. Uh, ATF gun walking scandal. Okay. Look into this. Okay. Once you do this fast, yeah, it is fast and furious. Eric Holder slammed for fast and furious. This this guy here under the Obama administration with the approval of the White House sent semi-automatic automatic rifles, guns across the border to the drug cartels in Mexico. Just letting you know, this guy's talking about security of the United States being put at risk and doing unlawful stuff. That, that's who this guy is, right? Politicians, this, this is him, right? Okay, we continue. Apologies about stopping the video. As they, uh, as they should be. What are your things that can be done? And have you, has the government explored the ability to be able to seize the sites? Last week you were before us saying, look at all the websites we seized and shut down. But you can't do that in this case at all. What, what are the parameters that are limiting that? And what are some of the actions that you did authorize to go forward? Well, it's an ongoing investigation. I don't want to get into exactly what I authorized, but I can say that uh, I personally um, authorized a number of things last week and I think that's an indication of the seriousness with which we take this matter and the highest level involvement in the United States Department of Justice um, with regard to all the tactics that we can do or can use to ameliorate the, um, the consequences of uh, these actions I don't want to get into those as well but we will do everything that we can both to hold people accountable and to minimize the harm that will befall the American people well I think Assange should be assassinated actually I think Obama should put a contract and maybe use a drone or something. The United States strongly condemns the illegal disclosure of classified information. So let's be clear. This disclosure is not just an attack on America's foreign policy interests. It is an attack on the international community. The alliances and partnerships, the conversations and negotiations that safeguard global security and advance economic prosperity. This potential database for all of our enemies that now hangs on the internet and, and, and provides an opportunity for them to mine looking for, um, looking for weaknesses in force protection, tactics, techniques, and procedures, who we do business with, how we, um, how we cultivate sources, all this stuff is potentially out there for people who wish to do us harm to take advantage of. Well, this is the Department of Defense. I mean, we're not one who makes judgments about legal remedies and the appropriate recourse and all that kind of stuff. But as I mentioned before, we're not alone in this endeavor. The FBI, the DOJ are also investigating this, are also involved in this matter. And they will obviously have to make judgments about how to proceed. Congress can act in an expeditious and bipartisan manner to encourage and authorize the use by the executive branch of all necessary means to respond and defeat WikiLeaks. How is it? How is it that the WikiLeaks guy remains free? You know, back in the old days when men were men and countries were countries, this guy would die of lead poisoning from a bullet in the brain. And nobody would know who put it there. Julian Assange is a cyber terrorist in wartime. He's guilty of sabotage, espionage, 
crimes against humanity. He should be killed. This man is an enemy of the state. Mm -hmm. WikiLeaks is a, you know, perhaps some sort of a, a, a virtual weapon of mass destruction. Right. That Mr. Assange has given aid and comfort to the enemy. He's empowered the enemy. He's put Americans at risk. He's put the allies of Americans at risk. This geopolitical, military, economic chess game that goes on constantly on the entire planet. He's taken away some of our advantage and he's given it to our enemies. And I wish and I hope that there's a way that we can find a way to prosecute a man like that, that we can protect ourselves. And if we fail to do that, or even if we're successful in that and it exposes some other vulnerabilities, I suggest, Mr. Speaker, that this Congress take a look at some new legislation, a new structure of law that's really not brought as about because of the actions of Mr. Assange, but brought about because the actions of our enemies are terrorist enemies. The foundation stone of this WikiLeaks uh, issue is an illegal act. The Australian Federal Police is going to provide the government with some advice about uh, uh, potential criminal conduct of the individual involved. What I would say about the publication of the WikiLeaks information is it's grossly irresponsible. I think that WikiLeaks and its founder, Julian Assange, should be facing criminal charges, and his website, which he uses to aid and abet our terrorist enemies, should also be shut down to defend our national security. It's time that the Obama administration treats WikiLeaks for what it is, a terrorist organization whose continued operation threatens our security. Shut it down. Shut it down. It is time to shut down this terrorist organization, this terrorist website, WikiLeaks. Shut it down, Attorney General Holder. Let's continue with the article. Quote, also in 2010, smears of uh, Julian's character started to appear. He was accused of sexual misconduct by Swedish authorities, but later these, ter these turned out to be bogus and no charges have, have ever been made. Over time, they have just become worse. As N Nils Melzer has pointed out, pointed out, Julian Assange has been exposed to progressively severe forms of cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment, amounting to psychological torture. And this is uh, Neil's uh, Twitter feed, right? Should we go there? Let's do it. Doink. Oh, what's going on? How do I go there? Uh, that's right. Actually, we'll just read it, okay? We won't bother jumping this. Um, so, Hashtag Julian Assange has been deliberately exposed for a period of several years to progressively severe forms of cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment, the cumulative effects of which can only be described as psychological torture. Right? Seems like a useful tool to allow politicians to balance their chest. Yep. Shut down the terrorist organizations that prove we are terrorist organizations. Yeah. I'm just reading comments. Sorry. Um, okay. Continuing with the article. Quote. Or ordinary decent people under normal circumstances are disgusted by those who engage in psychological torture. However, some people are not decent. The UK's foreign secretary, Jeremy Hunt, made it clear he didn't appreciate what Nils Melzer had to say, but rather that denying rather than denying the torture had taken place, he su suggested that Assange had brought it on himself by hiding hiding in the Ecuadorian embassy and suggested Nils uh, Melzer was making inflammatory accusations and was interfering in the normal processes of the British courts. So here's Jeremy Hunt's Twitter uh, reply, right? This is wrong. Assange chose to hide in the embassy and was always free to leave and face justice. The UN Special Rapporteur should allow British courts to make their judgments without his interference or inflammatory accusations, right? And then it continues, quote, article, Nil, Nils Melzer was quick to correct Jer, uh, Jeremy Hunt with a strong response. Here's Nils Melzer's response, right? Quote, with all due respect, sir, Mr. Assange, was was about as free to leave as someone sitting on a rubber boat in a shark pool as detailed in my formal letter to you so far uk courts have not shown the impartiality and objectivity required by the rule of law 
And this was, again, the discussion taking place was in May 2019. We're in November 2019, and a lot has unfolded since then, right? Julian Assange's condition is much, much worse. Continuing with the article, quote, in Australia, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, FD, uh, DFAT, put out a carefully worded statement suggesting the Australian government hadn't been uh, complicit in the psychological torture of Julian Assange. And they, they put out a little statement. Uh, uh, continues to provide, so uh, depart, uh, statement on Julian Assange. The Aust Australia, just the first sentence, right? The Australian government continues to provide active and high level uh, counselor assistance to Mr. Assange, which they really haven't, right? Uh, continuing with the article, quote, again, it is interesting that DFAT did not deny that any torture of Julian Assange had taken place. Instead, they focused on the treat treatment he was receiving in Belmarsh prison. They stated that the Australian government was confident the treatment Julian was receiving in the prison was appropriate. In an interview with Australia's ABC News, Nils Melzer clarified that he never claimed the treatment Julian Assange was receiving at Belmash prison amounted to torture. Melzer explained the torture Julian Assange had been subjected to was to, due to the relentless public mobbing, vilification, intimidation, and sustained judicial harassment occurring for uh, ulterior motives over the proceedings. So here is video from... Uh, Nils uh, Melzer, right? I'm just going to read the text from ABC News. ABC News put this out. Wow. The UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Melzer, speaks with Yev Young about visiting Julian Assange in a highly se high security London prison. He says the WikiLeaks founder has suffered psychological torture, a claim the Australian government has rejected. Okay, so let's watch this video. Well, I have three main concerns. The first is really that I'm extremely worried about his current state of health, which was alarming already when I visited him, uh, but which now seems to have deteriorated to the point that he's no longer able to stand trial and to participate in his own court hearings. Secondly, I must say I'm appalled at the consistent and sustained and concerted abuse this man has been exposed to at the hands of the democratic states over a period of almost a decade. And thirdly, I'm also gravely alarmed at the risks he would be exposed to if it's extradited to the United States. I fear he would be exposed to a politicized show trial uh, in violation of his fundamental human rights. Essentially, are you saying that Mr. Assange is uh, being psychologically tortured at the moment? I, he, is, he, he shows all the same symptoms that a person would show that has been exposed to prolonged psychological torture. Now, I believe that's the cumulative effect of various forms of cruel and human and degrading treatment that had, he has been exposed to over the past years. And yet the Australian government has rejected any suggestion by you that it's complicit in psychological torture of Mr Assange. And it in fact says that Mr Assange has told them that he's being treated like any other prisoner in Belmarsh prison. Well, he is being subjected to the same... Uh, detention conditions as any other prisoner and I have never claimed that he's being physically tortured where he is being detained now um, but he has been exposed through the past years to a relentless campaign of public mobbing vilification and intimidation he has also been exposed to I would say a, a sustained campaign of judicial harassment and by this I mean the use of judicial power and judicial procedures for ulterior motives that are not really related to the formal reason for these judicial proceedings. Okay, let's continue on with the article. Are there activist groups anywhere that are a part of this issue? I would love to support. Um, Zach, I'm just going to read Zach's comment. Are there activist groups anywhere that are a part of this issue? I would love to support. I highly recommend, Chicho, does Assange have good people around him? Are his lawyers adequate? The people he has now supporting him are pretty adequate. He didn't for a while. That's why he got stuck in London. <laughs> Kick. Uh, okay. So, um, 
as far as uh, Zach, uh, the organizations, I would highly recommend on my Twitter feed, you'll see at Mrs. Assange. Uh, that's Assange's mom on Twitter being very active. Follow her Twitter feed and she's linking up different sources where uh, people are getting together and there is a movement growing now where people all around the world are getting together in communities and saying, having a discussion to find out what they can do for Assange. And some people are doing um, uh, sort of movement, sort of art, art displays or holding up signs and stuff like this. There's a whole bunch of group that got together and uh, there was like 12 of them or something like this. They had free Julian Assange and stuff. And they were on a beach the whole day with busy beach. I forget where it was, where they were holding up the sun and were doing different things. So there's things growing now. Uh, I would recommend following either WikiLeaks. This is just a play by world governments to get rid of WikiLeaks. This is just a play by world governments to get rid of WikiLeaks. I would suggest following WikiLeaks on Twitter, following Julian's mom on Twitter, um, following a hashtag free Assange on Twitter or Julian Assange on Twitter. Um, and and just slowly growing it from there. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming up, brother. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Or sister, of course. I'm going to have to leave exams this week whose grades go off to universities I'm applying to. I'll be sure to drop in next time. Peace, Chad and Chicho. Peace, Jacoby. Thanks for popping by and the love, brother. Okay. So let's continue on with the article. Okay, I will do that. I am writing a major call. Uh, I am writing a major in college, so I want to get involved. I will definitely do that. Good old SAT. Bye. Okay. Continuing with the article. Quote, while the Australian government was critical of Nils Melzer, it is important to keep in mind their criticism do not directly address the finding that Julian Assange is indeed suffering from the effects of psychological torture. Given his cr uh, credentials, it seems likely, likely they know Nils Melzer is absolutely correct, and so, and so they can only make feeble criticism of him about what he didn't actually say to save face. The UK's official response took over four months and was extremely brief, essentially saying little more than, quote, the government rejects any allegations that Julian Assange has been subjected to torture in any form as a result of actions by the UK government, end quote. Okay, so here's Nils Melzer, okay, just out. The official half a page reply by the U UK government of 7 October 2019 to my official letter, May 27, 27 2019. And that was it. That's all they're saying. Special rapture and torture and da, 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 da. that was a statement they made, right? Crazy, crazy okay let's continue on with the article and just it's just a little bit and then it continues on with the on contact interviews that assange had and again another interview that the person had on rt with rt reporters okay so quote the uk was careful to avoid julian saying julian was not the victim of torture and was not exhibiting all the signs of having been tortured and as Nils Melzer had earlier clearly pointed out. It is also important to point out that Nils Melzer had always stated that the torture of Julian Assange was a collective effort conducted by the US, UK, Sweden and Ecuador. Just as the driver of a getaway vehicle involved in a bank robbery can be charged with a crime, the UK is responsible for its part in the torture. Nils Nils Melzer revealed himself to be an eloquent speaker in various informative interviews. He was interviewed by Chris Hedges on RT. Let's watch this interview. Okay. I hope this is big enough. Welcome to On Contact. Okay. Today we discuss the judicial and psychological persecution of Julian Assange with the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Niels Melzer. He was deprived of this status, of this legal status, and expelled from the embassy, arrested by the British police, and within three hours, after six years in the embassy, he was brought to court, to the British court, for, and, and was convicted in a hearing that lasted allegedly about 15 minutes after he had had 
again, about 15 minutes to prepare his defense in a very agitated state. He had just been arrested after six years in the embassy. He was given only a quarter of an hour with his lawyers to prepare his defense. Okay, I'm just gonna check to make sure the sound quality on this is okay. Uh, are you guys okay with the sound on this? Uh, let me see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, this isn't gonna work, this angle. So I'm just gonna check chat, make sure the sound is not too loud. Thought Ecuador were the good guys, at least before uh, Moreno. Sound is decent, sound is decent? Okay, awesome, let's continue with this. And all of, they were the good guys. Uh, Neocons took over. Ecuadorian government for handing Julian Assange over to UK, opening their doors and allowing the UK police to come in pulled Julian Assange out of the Ecuadorian embassy and Julian Assange having you Ecuadorian citizens that they betrayed one of their own citizens right they got a guarantee loan from the IMF for four billion dollars that's the biggest payout for any human being that I know of right guaranteed loan obviously there is sort of uh, caveats in there what they can do with the money they still have to introduce austerity and stuff like this. That's why we're seeing mass protests in Ecuador where the Ecuadorian government actually had to pick up from the capital city and move the government to another city because Ecuadorian citizens were marching on the capital city to overthrow the government, right? That's how corrupt the Ecuadorian government is. As soon as the president Ecuador, he's he loses power, he's not going to remain in Ecuador. The odds are he's going to be on a one-way plane to the United States where he's going to seek asylum because the Ecuadorian people want his head. Okay. Let's listen for the remainder of the show. I'm just going to I'm going to continue interacting with the chat a little bit and we're going to listen to this interview. Okay. It's a very good interview. Chris Hedges is a phenomenal reporter. Okay. Phenomenal reporter. World renowned. I don't agree with everything he's, he says or his ideology, right? But I trust him. Right? Let's see what uh, Nils Melzer has to say about the torture of Julian Assange. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London by British police two months ago after nearly seven years in the embassy. He was incarcerated with a 50-week sentence for a bail violation in the high-security Belmarsh prison in London. In declining health, he was transferred last week to the hospital wing of the prison. He was unable to participate in his first court hearing by video link. Assange's physical and psychological state, which includes a dramatic loss of weight and difficulty in holding a conversation, came as the United Nations rapporteur on torture, Niels Melzer, issued a report saying Assange had undergone prolonged psychological torture. Melzer went on to criticize what he called the judicial persecution of Assange by Great Britain, the United States, Ecuador, and Sweden. He warned that Assange would face a politicized show trial in the United States if he were extradited to face 17 charges under the Espionage Act for his role in publishing classified military and diplomatic cables, documents, and videos that exposed U.S. war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. If found guilty, Assange could receive a 170-year prison sentence. Joining me from Vienna to discuss the conditions of Assange's detention, his psychological and physical health, as well as the judicial proceedings against Assange, is UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Niels Melzer. So Niels, let's begin. You visited uh, Julian on May 9th, accompanied by two uh, doctors who specialize in psychological torture um what did you find well thank you for having me yes uh, indeed on the 9th of may i was able to visit uh, mr assange in belmarsh prison uh, i was accompanied by two uh, medical experts a forensic expert and a psychiatrist both of them are specialized in in identifying examining and documenting the traces of psychological and physical torture what we found is that Mr. Assange shows all the symptoms that are typical for a person that has been pr exposed to uh, prolonged psychological torture. What we're talking about is severe traumatization, uh, chronic anxiety, uh, intense 
constant stress and inability to relax, to focus, to uh, think uh, in a structured straight line. Uh, uh, so someone who is in a constant hyper uh, stimulated uh, uh, stage uh, and, and cannot, can no longer uh, relax. And what are both the physical and psychological uh, short-term and long-term effects uh, and what do you attribute that psychological torture to? Because you have really pinned the blame on four different governments. Right. Well, uh, obviously, uh, you know, psychological torture can have various consequences. It's difficult to predict exactly how the situation will evolve. What we've seen now uh, uh, during my visit was already alarming. And what we have seen since then, it, that his, his state of, of health has dramatically deteriorated as predicted by the psych psychiatrist accompanying my visit. What would can happen, obviously, in a prolongation of this is that will have irreversible damage uh, even on the physical level, first on the, uh, on the psychological, emotional level, but then also on the physical level it can lead to uh, nervous uh, uh, breakdowns or even actually then uh, to cardiovascular uh, 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 damage that is no longer um, uh, uh, reversible. Uh, but it's very difficult uh, to predict that with, with accuracy and I'm obviously I'm not myself a doctor so I don't want to speculate where this will Go. What we see that today, Mr. Assange is no longer capable to participate in his own court hearings. Now, how do we attribute this to these four countries that were mentioned in my report? Well, uh, Mr. Assange has been isolated for uh, about seven years in his uh, in, in the uh, in his room in the Ecuadorian embassy. So he has been exposed to a very controlled uh, environment where uh, his access to the outside world has been increasingly limited. So the factors that could have um, uh, caused such grave uh, consequences are, are basically uh, uh, identifiable with a high degree of certainty because there are no other external factors that are unknown to us. We know very much what he has been exposed to. So here, um, I have identified four main factors that I think uh, have affected him. One was certainly the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the attempt of the U.S. Uh, to get uh, Assange extradited and to be able to prosecute him and in my view having looked at the records also to make an example of him uh, in order to deter others from imitating what Assange and WikiLeaks have done. Uh, in terms of ex exposing great, you know, big amounts of, of, of compromising information about the United States. And once that's a bit of the big elephant in the room that has accompanied this case for the past decade. And from this, around this narrative, um, evolved the rest of, of, of the judicial proceedings that we have seen against Mr. Assange. Um, I, I think it is, is important to see that Mr. Assange had a credible fear from the beginning to be extradited to the U.S. and to be exposed to cruel and human and degrading treatment there. Um, I can speak more to this uh, just in a moment. But once we recognize that he had this credible fear, obviously he would not expose himself to, this, to a situation where he could be extradited to the U.S. So when the Swedes initiated um, legal proceedings or a preliminary in investigation against him for sexual offenses, it's important to know that once the complainant had informed the police, immediately after that the public was informed and Assange actually was never questioned by the police before the public was informed and he learned about these allegations in the press. He was in Sweden at the time and immediately went to a police station himself and said, could I please make my statement and participate in this um, because Swedish law actually even prohibits uh, the publication of the name of the complainant and the suspected offender in a sexual offense case. His statement was taken and two or three days later the prosecutor closed the case saying that there was no evidence for any crime having been committed at all. Now just a day or two later it was reopened by a different prosecutor and Mr. Assange voluntarily stayed on in Sweden for three weeks saying I'm at the disposal of the prosecution for any questions you have to ask and when he had a commitment in London and he had to leave he asked the prosecutor whether he was allowed to leave which was confirmed and so he was authorized to leave and he left the country 
And as soon as he was basically in the UK, Sweden started to, to ask, uh, issued an arrest warrant against him and, and claimed that he had uh, tried to avoid it, to avoid questioning. And they had asked him to come back to Sweden for questioning. And then Mr. Assange became a little bit suspicious and asked, well, I, I thought we had dealt with this, so what's the issue? And he was afraid that he was just being called back so Sweden could surrender him to the US. And here I have to, to open a parenthesis. We have to know that Sweden has had a history uh, of surrendering people to the CIA without any due process from Sweden. In 2001, I believe, uh, Sweden surrendered two uh, Egyptian nationals who had been recognized asylum seekers in Sweden without any due process to the CIA on Stockholm airport, and they were flown to Egypt and were tortured there. So Assange had a, 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 a credible fear that this could happen to him. And so he asked Sweden to guarantee that they would not extradite him to the US if he came for questioning on the sexual offense cases. Sweden consistently refused to give this guarantee. Then Assange said, well, I'm not going to come to Sweden if you can't guarantee that, but I'm going to be at your disposal for questioning through video link, which Sweden refused, although they practiced this in multiple other, ca other cases at the same time. Then Assange said, well, if you want, don't want to question me through video link, you can come to London and question me here um, in the presence of my lawyer. And the, the Sweden again refused to do that and insisted on having him extradited to Sweden and without a guarantee on, uh, against further extradition to the US. So that's why, and it's important to understand that, that's why Mr. Assange uh, was uh, uh, looked for refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy once the extradition proceeding from S to Sweden uh, didn't go in his favor at the Supreme Court in the UK. So once he was about to be extradited to Sweden, he escaped into the Ecuadorian embassy not because he didn't want to confront the Swedish allegations, but because he didn't want to get exposed to uh, further extradition to the US. I, I think it's important also to, to, to point out that what is called a rape uh, uh, allegation is not by any stretch what would be called you know, rape in English or any other language than Swedish in the world. And I, I know what I'm talking about because I do speak Swedish. So what this, what, what this rape allegation refers to an offense that um, doesn't involve any violence. So essentially, he's being accused or alleged to have inten intentionally ripped a condom during consensual intercourse with a woman. She says it was intention. He says it was accident. And so predictably, this is something no one will ever be able to prove. Uh, the piece of evidence that was submitted to the prosecution, the, the condom, was actually examined and did not have any DNA on it from him from anyone else or from the complainant. So it seems that this was just a new condom that had been submitted as evidence against him. So there is no evidence um, that he committed any offense. And still, the, the, the Swedish law also prohibits the prosecution from talking publicly about uh, sexual offenses that are under investigation. And they, from day one, basically informed the public that Mr. Assange was suspected of, of rape. Um, and, and so this was a, a clearly misleading allegation. And they also refused any, uh, they went out of their way really to prevent Mr. Assange from taking, uh, uh, from making his own voice her heard and to defend himself publicly against these allegations without at the same time exposing himself to a extradition to the US where he had a credible fear of, of being exposed there to, uh, to serious violations of his human rights. So I, and, and this whole narrative is extremely important because that dominated his, his presence in the Ecuadorian embassy for, for seven years. Um, we're going to take a break, but before I do, uh, would you argue that this is part of a concerted judicial prosecution? Those are the terms that you've used kind of in concert between Sweden, Ecuador, the UK, and the United States. Well, initially, Ecuador obviously was, was offered him refuge and asylum status and was not part of that. But the, there are emails that have been published where the British Crown Prosecution uh, uh, Service actually uh, encourages the Swedes um, not to get cold feet when they wanted to close this investigation and to maintain that pressure on Mr. Assange. And the way it has been uh, conducted, uh, I don't see any explanation 
on how a prosecutor could maintain an investigation like this, a preliminary investigation without ever pressing charges, without any uh, evidence being produced, uh, uh, unless there are some ulterior motives. Great. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation about Julian Assange with UN Special Rapporteur Niels Melzer. I think it goes into commercials now. Oh no, he's going back straight into it. Cool. Let's continue with it. Welcome back to On Contact. We continue our conversation about Julian Assange with UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Niels Melzer. So talk a little bit about your concerns about extradition. Uh, and you are, I believe, a lawyer. Uh, also, uh, legally, uh, the arguments that have seen him uh, now uh, serving a 50-week prison sentence. So both from the legal standpoint, what's happening to him now, and your concerns about uh, extradition to the United States? Well, first of all, I believe it's important to understand that uh, the, the prison ser uh, uh, sentence that he's serving now relates to him violating the bail conditions that the British courts had established at the time in relation to the extradition request by Sweden. Uh, so, so Sweden had, had asked for his extradition because of the sexual offense cases, and then when he was about to be extradited, he, he violated the bail conditions to seek asylum that was given to him by the Ecuadorian state and maintained for almost seven years. So when, uh, when the president of Ecuador decided one day he would... Let me just interrupt. It's the, there was a change of president, so this was Lenin Moreno. Right. Lenin Moreno was uh, elected in 2017, so when he came to office, he sought more, you know, to, 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 uh, to approach the U.S. and to, to get a better relationship with the U.S. And it seems that part of this, uh, 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 you know, uh, rapprochement was to, to, to get Assange uh, extradited to, to the U.S. And, and so uh, uh, Moreno uh, one day decided that he would uh, uh, terminate the asylum status of Julian Assange and also suspend his citizenship the same day, on the 11th of April, without any announcement, without any due process. Uh, he, he was deprived of this status, of this legal status, and expelled from the embassy, arrested by the British police, and within three hours, after six years in the embassy, he was brought to court, to a British court, for, and, and was convicted in a hearing that lasted allegedly about 15 minutes after he had had, again, about 15 minutes to prepare his defense in a very agitated state. He had just been arrested after six years in the embassy. He was given only a quarter of an hour with his lawyers to prepare his defense. The lawyer during the, the legal, the defense counsel during the hearing uh, submitted a, a, a file to the judge saying that one of the judges had a strong conflict of interest because her husband had been exposed by WikiLeaks uh, and, and so there, there was a conflict of interest that needed to be investigated. So he has an objection against his hearing. The, the, the judge brushed this aside, apparently, and immediately said, I, you know, uh, complained, how, how dare you, con defense counsel, accuse one of our judges of a conflict of interest, convicted Mr. Assange immediately, and called him a narcissist who cannot get beyond his own self-interest. Now, you have to know, during this hearing, Mr. Assange had said nothing except, I plead not guilty. So how could he be a narcissist that cannot be, uh, get beyond his own self-interest? So clearly, the judge had brought a prejudice, a bias, with him into the courtroom and displayed a, a, a clear bias against Mr. Assange. Now, in the sentencing hearing a, a little bit later, I think it was the, the 1st of May, he was... Uh, sentenced to 50 weeks in prison, which is just shy of the maximum of one year in prison that you can get for bail, bail violation. And the court, the judge said that this was one of the gravest violation imaginable of, of bail conditions. And although the, the lawyers had submitted a thick file again with mitigating circumstances saying, look, Mr. Assange really had a credible fear of, of being extradited to the US. So he apologized for violating the bail, but he, he just explained why he did so and that he was actually given asylum by a state 
uh, for six, six plus years, and the judge actually refused to take that into account as mitigating circumstances and sentenced him close to the maximum. So it, again, it shows a disproportionate uh, uh, sentencing and, and a bias against him, where normally a bail violation would lead to a fine and, and perhaps in a very grave case to a, a, a short prison sentence. So that's what we see in the UK courts. Now, again, the elephant in the room being extradition to the US, uh, it is very important here that we speak about the risks that he would be exposed to in case of extradition to the US. Personally, I'm convinced there is no chance he would get a fair trial in the United States. And why do I say that? Well, fair trial certainly generally um, uh, requires a presumption of innocence. Now, I don't have to explain to you what is the public opinion about the Julian Assange in, in the US after almost a decade of unrestrained, I would say, public mobbing and uh, you know, intimidation, calls for his assassination, uh, uh, you know, instigation to violence against him. Uh, uh, he, he's been exposed to public ridicule. He has, by, including by you know serving officials and, and former officials uh, of government, uh, by by you know prominent uh, 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 personalities. So there was an unrestrained campaign of public mobbing. He has been exposed to, and the, so there is. It's very difficult for him to get a a unbiased and partial court hearing. The fair trial also requires legality, that he's actually being charged for something that is punishable. Now, if you look at the 17 of the 18 charges are under the Espionage Act, and all of them relate to activities that any investigative journalist would conduct and would be protected under, I believe it's the First Amendment of the US Constitution, under the freedom of press and freedom of expression. And then the 18th charge, uh, the so-called hacking charge, doesn't relate to him, doesn't claim that he actually hacked a computer to receive information, but he obtained all of the information he published uh, by someone who had full clearance. So he, as any other investigative journalist, just received this information, may have perhaps encouraged the source, as any journalist would do, to give him the information, and then published it. And the hacking charge relates only to him having unsuccessfully attempted to help the source to break a password that would have allowed her to cover her traces, her tracks. But he didn't succeed. So there was no damage done. And the, I believe the maximum sentence for this type of, of, of offense would be about five years in prison. Now, clearly, if it was an, an unsuccessful attempt, uh, if punishable at all, it would be at the lower range of these five years of imprisonment or even just a fine. Now, I don't see any possibility politically that Mr. Assange would be acquitted in the U.S. or that, it, that he would receive a very light sentence of, you know, say, six weeks in prison and then he would be released. I think that's utterly unrealistic, especially when we see the the specific court, the so-called espionage court in, East, in the Eastern District of Virginia where he has been charged. Um, my understanding is that, uh, it, that there has been no defendant that has, has been acquitted there of national security charges. Uh, we have seen Chelsea Manning, who was actually the, the source of the information uh, Assange published, had been sentenced originally to 35 years in prison a sentence that would usually be given to a, a, a leading war criminal in The Hague. Um, now, luckily, she has been pardoned by, by Obama in the last week of his, of his uh, in office. But it, it shows the kind of sentence that probably would, would, would be given to, to, to Assange. And it also needs to be pointed out that e a fair trial requires equality before the law. And now, when a government prosecutes a whistleblower, and let alone a journalist, for having exposed serious crimes by government agents. I'm talking about war crimes. Um, and these war crimes are not being prosecuted at all. But the source is being prosecuted and faces punishments like life in prison without parole, and the worst case, death penalty. Um, then there's some, the, the, the government really loses any credibility in legal terms, in moral terms, and in political terms. 
And in my, that's where I, why I say prosecution then becomes persecution, because there is no longer the rule of law. There is no equality before the law. There is no transparent court proceeding when you have a secret you know, grand jury and secret sessions uh, de debating uh, a classified evidence. It's, it's, these are proceedings that are fundamentally skewed against the defendant, and I don't think uh, uh, Julian Assange would get a fair trial in the I, US. I first want to point out, number one, he's not an American citizen. He's an Australian citizen, although I think, as you have pointed out, Australia has kind of dropped the ball in terms of uh, protecting an Australian citizen. Secondly, WikiLeaks is a news organization that is not based in the United States. So I think there's even the legal question of how he can be charged uh, under the Espionage Act. Again, I'm going to ask you as an attorney, do you think Julian Assange committed a crime? Personally, I, from the evidence I have seen, I don't think so. Uh, perhaps you could, you know, you know that interpreting the, you know, a criminal code is also, always leaves a certain margin of appreciation to the judge. Now, to be fair, I think you could construct a slight offense, perhaps, if all the allegations are proven in relation to, you know, trying, attempting on sex unsuccessfully to, to help someone breaking a, a code but not succeeding. It's a bit like charging someone for trying to exceed the speed limit but not succeeding because the car's too weak. I don't think that makes sense from a prosecutorial uh, standpoint. Even if theoretically you could, you could construct a certain criminal energy, I don't think that makes any sense at all. It certainly doesn't justify the type of suffering he has been going through and, and uh, that, that he would likely face uh, when, when extradited to the US. I would just point out, I, as a former investigative journalist for the New York Times who uh, published classified material in the New York Times, we did help our sources attempt to protect themselves. That was uh, standard protocol. I just wanted to, to raise one example that is, is unrelated to this case, just for comparison. We recently had uh, two Reuters um, journalists being imprisoned in Myanmar for having exposed a massacre by s Myanmar soldiers on civilians. They were sentenced to, I believe, 10 years in prison and served, I believe, one and a half years and were then pardoned. At the same time, though, Myanmar actually prosecuted the involved soldiers and sentenced them to, I believe, seven years in prison, or it was the other way around. They were sentenced to 10 and the others to seven, but at long prison sentences, and they were pardoned two after a year, but still, they actually prosecuted these soldiers. Now, the U.S. has a long way from that. They have not prosecuted anyone, uh, to my knowledge, in relation to the collateral murder video or to the Senate Committee report on torture. That's an extremely good point. The people who expose the war crimes, Chelsea Manning, uh, Julian Assange, uh, were, uh, have been persecuted or imprisoned. And we have a slew of whistleblowers, especially under the Obama administration, who attempted to expose malfeasance, fraud, and crimes by the government. They were all persecuted under the Espionage Act. So uh, I think all of your concerns about the judicial system in the United States are extremely valid. I just want to close. We have a few seconds left. What would you recommend be the proper treatment at this moment of Julian Assange? Well, clearly, in my view, an extradition to the US is out of the question in the current circumstances. And, uh, and, and, and Britain and Sweden and Ecuador have to recognize that in, in how they handled this, uh, this, this affair, they clearly violated the Convention Against Torture. They should release Mr. Assange. I, they may question him with regard to these sexual offenses, but frankly, I don't think there is, there is really much behind that. And if, if there is, I think he has suffered more than his share already through that ill treatment. He should be released, and he should be comp compensated, and he should be rehabilitated by those states. That was Niels Melzer, UN Special Rapporteur on Torture. Great. Thank you very much, Niels. Pretty enlightening. Lots of great um, filler just give you the information of what took place. Uh, Post-apocalypse uh, just uh, mentioned something. Manning's sentence was commuted, not pardoned. This leaves the guilt of the crime, but ends the imprisonment. And thank you for pointing that out, uh, post-apocalypse. Okay, gang? Now, we sort of have to go to the end of the stream. Um, there's a lot more information. There's another video here uh, where 
Afshin Ratasani, also on RT, interviewed uh, uh, Nils Melsner. And I've watched this as well. It's quite good. Okay. Nils Melsner gave, um, gave various other interviews by the mainstream media, noticeably failed to feature his interviews prominently, right? Some of these interviews are listed below. So there's a whole bunch of interviews here. Um, there's Democracy Now!, BBC actually did it, ABC, um, The Real News, I've watched this as well, uh, Democracy Now!, I've watched, Mixed Cloud, I haven't seen, Mind Press, and uh, let's finish off this article. Let me uh, finish off this article for the last few minutes that we're going to do the stream for. So going back to the article, quote, Nil, Nils Melsner also wrote an important article called Demasking the Torture of Julian Assange, but found that no large news outlet wanted to publish it. In this article, he explained how he himself had been reluctant to investigate Julian Assange's tor torture because he had believed there had been so there had been some because because uh, where are we? Uh, in this article, he explained how he himself had been reluctant to investigate Julian's torture because he had believed there had to be some truth in the many smears he had heard about Julian from the mainstream media. Because he couldn't get this article published, he was forced to publish it himself. You can read it. Um, you can read this article here. So I'm going to give you the link to this main article and you can, uh, in the chat, you can just go to the link from there okay on the 21st of october julian uh, assange appeared in court and people who have known julian were shocked by his behavior craig murphy a friend who had visited julian at at the ecuadorian embassy in london was one of the one of those shocked by his appearance and we read this article in a previous live stream right regarding this this article that's being quoted right now quote until yesterday, I had always been quite, quite spectacle, uh, skeptical of those who claimed that Julian's treatment amounted to torture, even of Nils Melzer, the UN Special Repertoire on Torture, and skeptical of those who suggested he may be subject to debilitating drug treatment. But having attended the trials in Uzbekistan of several victims of extreme torture and having worked with survivors from Sierra Leone and elsewhere, I can tell you that yesterday changed my mind entirely and Julian exhibited exactly the symptoms of a torture victim brought, uh, brought blinking into the light. Particular, particularly in terms of disorientation, confusion, and the real struggle to assert free will through the fog of learned helplessness. Okay, and you can find the link to that article um, in this article as well. And we read that whole article in the previous stream, right? Confirming Craig Murphy's description, a Rupley cameraman was able to capture footage of the disoriented, confused, and blinking Julian Assange. In this footage, he no longer resembles the defiant Julian of the past. Okay, so I'm just going to read a couple more comments that are posted. We're going to play this video. It's a two minute video or one minute video. And in this, the reporter calls Assange a hero. Uh, and you'll see the condition that Julian Assange is in. And what we're going to do is next week, we're going to continue our discussion. We're going to do an open discussion on relationships. We're going to do a math discussion. And we're going to do Julian Assange part four because I have a few other, other, other articles that. I would like to read to you guys, especially the article that lists all the charges against Julian Assange, which are all related to information revealed. Majority of them or a lot of them to U.S. committing war crimes. Right. Have you read the Jacobian interview with Fiddle Narz Narzain? I don't think so, Tab. It isn't terribly interesting, but he is a genuine insider in this case. Uh, Tab, if you can, uh, if you're on Discord, uh, post that article in the political folder that we have on Discord, and I'll give it a look. Okay, UK exclusive footage of Assange in prison van after extradition hearing. You should show that video. I've seen that one as well, Olive. I've seen that one as well. Uh, I don't want to do any more searches. I do have to take off in the next couple of minutes. Uh, I have a couple of students I have to see, but maybe I'll dig that up. If you send me a reminder, Olive, I'll dig that up and. Uh, uh, we'll show that in the next Julian Assange stream. So everyone, thank you for being here. 
thank you for participating in the discussion. Uh, thank you for sticking around and watching this, reading this. And if you're showing interest in what's going on with Julian Assange, and for sure follow Wikipedia. Um, it is the one in the article. Is it this one? Da, 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 da. Oh, in the previous article. I don't think it's uh, linked up in this one, uh, Olive, where he's standing around and uh, another prisoner has has a sort of contraband camera that they're showing the videos for. Okay, but send me the link uh, if if it's a different one, or if it's the same one, and we'll cover it in the next stream, Olive. Okay. Aside from that, gang, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Here's Julian Assange. Okay. Last video of him that we have. Oh, we got to go on YouTube to watch it. Let's go on YouTube to watch it. Bye, everyone.